Hey guys, uh, welcome back to online learning. I'm going to uh, show you how to use or uh, do a project in SketchUp for schools. Uh, I'm trying this new program, so uh, for you, when you see me right click, it should flash yellow. If uh, sorry, left click should flash yellow, right click should be blue, and the middle click should be green. So hopefully that comes up on the screen and also. Uh, there should be an overlay when I touch certain letters, etc. Hopefully you're seeing that. All right, sketch up for schools. Let's go to our apps. Uh, we'll scroll down, scroll down, look for sketch up for schools. I'm listening to a bit of Bob Dylan, so if you don't know who that is, maybe it's worth looking it up. Uh, this is what we're going to be replicating. This is an old project from Year 7 but it's kind of fun to draw on SketchUp. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, might be a good idea if you screenshot so that you can see the sizes. We'll be referring to those later. 65 high, 85 wide, 205 long, and that base is three mil thick. So if you want, pause the video, take a screenshot. Anyway, I'm going to get out of that. Uh, let go back to SketchUp Home. What I'd like you to do is open up your drawing template. Uh, first thing I want you to do is go in and save as and call it Pencil Box. Click OK. Let it do its thing. Uh, it should ask you where you're going to save your uh, SketchUp work. And I save mine. Uh, you should have a folder that you've shared to me that you're saving your work in. Uh, I save mine in a different place. Sketch up online, that's what I say. But... Sorry, I just highlight that and select. All right, we're going to start off with a uh, rectangle tool. Now, at various times, we're going to refer to these axes that you can see here green axis, red axis, blue axis. Uh, and there's certain commands that can help us to draw in certain directions along those axes. So, We'll explain as we go. Anyway, rectangle tool. So it's over here. Rectangle. Uh, we'll start at the origin. We'll come across. And remember, our dimensions appear down the bottom here. So I click once to start. And I don't click again. However, I type the size. Now, I want to draw the rectangle in that direction, so it's a good idea to have a look in this dimension box and see whether the big dimension comes first or the small one. So for me, my big dimension is first, smaller, the thinner one is next. So I type in that way, so it's 205, comma, 12 thick. Press enter, that sized it correctly. Push pull tool. There it is there. Click once, drag up, make it 65. Press enter. All right, we gotta do our cutouts. So I'm gonna rotate my view, middle mouse button, so I can see this side. Rectangle tool again. We're gonna start in the corner. So make sure we get that little icon to show where in the corner, the little green circle. Click once, and we're going to come down to this edge. And before you type anything, again, look in the dimension box down here and see which size we actually need to adjust. So 65 comes first. So I'm going to type 65, 12. If, for instance, I'm going to do a mistake, if you type the wrong size first, 
watch what happens. It draws my rectangle in the wrong place. So I know now to not write 12 comma 65, I would go 65 comma 12. So undo, which is control Z, and try again. Okay, 65 comma 12. Whoops. Let's start the rectangle in the correct place. Click once to start. 65, 12. There we go. Going to do exactly the same from this corner down in this way. 65, 12. Push pull tool. So it's over here, or we can start to use keyboard commands. So I'm going to press P for push pull tool. Click once on that surface and move it in that direction. If I move it out, it'll add. We don't want to do that. We want to take away. So just move it in the direction you want to go. And this is four millimeters deep. So four, enter. Now we're going to do this side exactly the same. So there's two ways you could actually do this. We can do it identical to what we just did. Click, move it in, four, enter. Or I can click and I want it to be level with that surface. So if I move my mouse over to that face and click, it will automatically push pull that exactly the same way. Okay, we need to draw our groove for the uh, for the lid. It has to be four millimeters down from the top. So we're actually going to use the ruler tool or tape measure tool. So click once on the tape measure. Click on the edge, try and avoid touching the middle where it goes blue. We don't want the midpoint, just anywhere on the edge. Click once, move the cursor down, and type 4, press enter. It'll set that line in the correct place. Rectangle tool, so I can press R on the keyboard. I want this rectangle to intersect with that dotted line. So make sure we get the intersection icon there. Click once, over to this edge. I'm going to look at my size down there. This is going to be three millimeters by the long dimension there. I can see in the bottom right corner is 181. So it's three comma 181. Uh, I'm going to use the erase tool. There's the eraser. We get rid of that line. I don't need that anymore. Push pull tool, just P. Click on this edge and make it level with that one, that face, and click. All right, back to the select tool, which is there. And we're going to triple click to select everything. One, two, three. And right click and make a component. Let's call this side one. Okay. At this point, if you like, you can add a material. I like to add materials as I go. It helps me visualize things. So the materials tab is here. Uh, we can search for ones down in this list, but I always find these built-in ones are pretty average. Let me show you. So I've clicked on that one. It just doesn't look right. So I'm going back to the home button here. And there is the one that I just used. So it's up here. Now we've got this edit material button. So I'm going to click that. And uh, yeah, we can fiddle with these sizes, can sometimes improve the look. But I'm going to show you something cool. Uh, we're going to choose an image for material texture. So drag and drop an image from your computer to here. So what I did, I went and searched timber texture. Uh, in Google Images, uh, these all came up. So choose something that you like the look of. I like the look of that. I think that might look pretty cool. Click on it. Save image as. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Save. I'm going to 
restore this down by clicking here to make my window small. I'll come back to SketchUp. There's my image on the desktop. I'll drag it into that box. Let's maximize my screen again. Use image. And there it is there. That comes up pretty nice. Uh, when you're choosing an image, I, it seems to work best if you have the grain running across, left to right. So don't choose one with grain running up and down. It doesn't seem to look right. But back to SketchUp. And you can actually use that texture, but we can change the color. So, you know, you can find a shade that you like to look up. I think that looks pretty cool. And click done. Oh, actually, it's a good idea. Let's edit. Let's name that. I'll just call it Marty One. From now on, that should appear here. Right, we can close that material box. Right, one side done. Uh, second side is an exact replica of that. So I don't know whether you notice what I just did there. I pressed the space button and that brought me back to the select tool. Uh, move tool. There's the move tool there. And what we'll do is click on this, uh, click on our shape. I usually grab one of the corners click once that's going to move this all over the place but I actually want to create a copy so if you look in this dialog down the bottom if I hit the control button it'll toggle, toggle a copy rather than just a move so I hit control once there's my copy I'll just move this over here somewhere actually I'll move it right up here out of the way and I'm still I still have the move tool selected uh, and we need to get this facing facing the correct direction. So with the move tool, as you come in close, you see those little red handles that appear. Uh, that allows us, and we get that little rotate, that protractor turn up, that allows us to rotate. So if I click on that, when I'm over that little red icon, move the cursor around, and we need to spin this exactly 180 degrees. Our angle appears down here. So I can spin it by hand, or, see I can't get it to snap at 180, so I think it's going to be best if I simply type 180 and press enter. Done. I know that was a long video, but we're going to stop this video here, that's part one. Uh, I'll continue part one shortly. Good idea to save your work. As you go, in case you know something crashes on your computer, I'll see you back for video two shortly.